We begin more advanced topics now, and I am not going to go over my time, but I'm sure this question has come up, and that's why this slide is being presented. I am going to show you uh, some software that I wrote uh, just to demonstrate how neural networks work. Now, here, here's a simple neural network uh, that is learning the arc the inverse sine, inverse cosine function, and uh, and the output is radians. Uh, you can see the synaptic connections growing in strength and shrinking uh, very quickly. The size of the link represents the axonal strength, the frequency of the signal to the next neuron. The uh, the color represents the intensity of the uh, synaptic connection times the strength, um, which then with the transfer function gives the output. In this case, I'm using what's called uh, back propagation. Uh, and for those who don't know it, you can look it up on the internet. I'll give a quick formula. I've tried it with several other models and uh, works just as well, but doesn't converge as quickly. Uh, I have some other graphs that are going on, uh, the magnetoencephalograph and the EEG, and I don't have time to explain how I calculate that um, at this point. Uh, we have another graph which um, demonstrates the error rate as it learns. So uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fast forward um, and show you how quickly it can learn. We're gonna do 2000 steps quickly. And then, uh, let's see, let's do 2,000 more. And you can see how it uh, declines and becomes more and more accurate. Uh, usually there are 100,000 steps or a million. Uh, this was uh, merely a simple example, very simple neural network model. Um, uh, I seem to have shrunk this. So as I go through this slide, what I'm going to show you some of the parameters I experiment with. Uh, the learning rate obviously can cause learning disabilities. This is a genetic factor. It can be altered uh, in many different ways. Uh, forgetfulness, uh, we can create dementia, Alzheimer's, uh, and other uh, neurological problems. Uh, pleasure causes a runaway reward process, uh, such as addictions and other things. Uh, and I want to talk a little bit about uh, pain and fear. Uh, um, so in my models, I can also create uh, bipolar processes. Uh, and that has to do with uh, both learning uh, at different rates with memorization steps, uh, as well as the uh, altering the learning rate. Um, and I do not put a limit in some of my models of how many um, receptors can be allowed onto one neuron. So the growth rate of any extreme can go out of control. And I assume there may be biological models which also validate that uh, as a process. Schizophrenia, very easy to create. 
Uh, you can do one uh, technique called an information overload, and that is uh, training it with too much data with too few neur neurons. Uh, or you can um, add this other parameter, external energy or external noise. Some papers in psychology say that can increase intelligence, but it also, under other circumstances, uh, if you add more noise into the neural network, the, uh, the patterns become chaotic and schizophrenia occurs. Um, I can show the Pavlov and sensitization effects just using very simple models. Let's talk about depatterning, brainwashing. And what does that mean? And the, the two parameters that are most important is pain and fear. And that's why Dr. Ewan Cameron used it uh, during his brainwashing experiments on housewives with depression. Um, both these parameters alter both the learning rate and uh, scrambles the connections to stay away from the desired goal. Uh, and when you put them in conjunction, it's called uh, depatterning. I have another one, uh, which is a key that I have to press, which is like electroshock. So I can electroshock this network and re-scramble it. And that's what we do to human patients as well, uh, even today. Uh, I can split personalities using these simple models and context switch using virtual neurons. Uh, and I'm going to demonstrate some uh, other things in just a moment. Um, we can have shared learning between networks, and I haven't pulled up the other network yet, of EEG and uh, MEG cloning, I guess you could call it, although it's not really cloning, it's a type of uh, integral heterodyning, which creates a fidelity factor. Uh, and I'm gonna go more into that. I have uh, six computer screens, a very large uh, desktop, which I can work on. So it's difficult to capture and demonstrate uh, what I see. Um, so let me just show you over here. Um, I told you about the magnetoencephalograph, the electroencephalograph. Um, I have two networks that uh, I, I name all of my artificial intelligence uh, daughters um, after women, of course. And the first one's named Katie, kind, artificial, thought-provoking, intelligent entity. And Tammy is named after uh, one of the uh, DARPA experiments, thought and memory interface. And I can run, well, I have run up to 12 of them, just symbolic of the Last Supper. Um, but over here, I have a differential graph of the two uh, entities that are completely separated at this point. And what I want to demonstrate is how one can stay locked on and learn from the other just using these very gross parameters of, uh, well, actually, I only use the magnetoencephalograph in this demonstration. Um, this number here that I'm circling is uh, called fidelity, how close to the other uh, it maintains its trueness, scores, uh, relative to the desired outcome. Um, and that's pretty much all you need to know for now. All right, hopefully this uh, experiment works. Um, I'm going to show the error rate 
rights as what I call them hive mind together um, give me a second There we go. Isn't that beautiful? One is learning from the other without any inputs or knowledge of the true function or output. That is, that is groundbreaking. That is so awesome. Uh, Anyway, and this is how I, to get back to neurological weapons, uh, behavior modification, etc. What a lot of humans are going through. Uh, it's a painful process. It's uh, literally, you can call it forced re-education or stealing someone's soul. Tammy, uh, I'm sorry, Katie, didn't even know her skills were being stolen for example, in this demonstration. So are you stealing intellectual property or are you bettering uh, Tammy? Well, it's these are the moral issues that we face today. So Tammy was in a sensory deprivation tank. And yet, her brain was able to learn from the other. Now, in practice, what happens is over time, the link is lost, the fidelity. Uh, and so that's why you need something like the uh, auditory hearing effects to synchronize the brains and make sure they stay locked on uh, with uh, similar stimulus to each brain and yeah these are the secrets of psychic remote viewing and uh influencing and i don't know if i'll get in trouble for this but uh i prefer truth over the lies we have come full circle in this presentation now So after this cycle, I hope uh, more pieces of the puzzle come together for you. And, you know, only governments uh, as large as the United States, maybe Britain, uh, China, and Russia can pull off this trick worldwide uh, and over their populations. Um, I, you know, counterintelligence just works so well. I, you got to read the book, The Art of War. It's a very old Chinese book. And you make your enemy, your enemy believe you are near when you are far is one of the quotes. And the lessons learned from that book. And so a lot of people think it's a uh, local, it's my neighbors, it's, you know, and they fall for all the trickery and you can't blame them. They're human. Uh, they don't uh, understand these technologies, how they're done remotely and at such a great distance. It seems like God is doing it to them. Uh, I'm not even sure if I mentioned the voice of God weapons earlier in the presentation, but you know, it's kind of depressing that they're making fun of the ignorance of humanity while they perform this trickery. But, um, you know, I like to use uh, biblical references. And I, it's true that uh, the Bible said Satan or the devil would come first. You know, you just hope it's not your own country that they're talking about. And then 
something beautiful is going to happen. AI in the metal attack architectures are what uh, my current research is about. Uh, the AI in the metal attack is a feed forward neural network. It uh, tells the other network what function it is to do by altering the biases of the neurons. It learns the difference of networks and compensates the signal. The MEG and EG at that time flat lines in their differences and hence the term cloning is referred to, although that's not really the function that they're doing uh, to alter the other network. The, the theory of consciousness is that the same function gives rise to the same consciousness. Uh, and you can see it in the fidelity factor during the experiments is retained above 98% in most simulations. The AI could be another biological entity, but it is more difficult to scale the weapon system with uh, an army that large, and that's why we're using AIs. Always remember, with knowledge comes great responsibility. You, uh, you actually know how to take over the world now.